So in this video, we're going to talk about z-score. Z-score is one of the measures of position. Measures of position describe the relative position of a certain data value within the entire set of data. So it means that every, every data value has a corresponding z-score. Now, z-score represents the distance, so how far that data value is from the mean. But that distance we're going to measure in terms of standard deviation. So in other words, z-score tells us how far or how many standard deviations away that certain data value is from the mean, from the center. Now, z-score can be either positive or, ne or negative, so and it all depends on where the data value is. If a data value is below the mean, so let's say if a data value is below the mean, which means that it's less. When it says below, it's like on the number line, so it's less than the mean, than, than the average value, right? Then Z score is, okay, I'm almost out of room here, so Z score is I'm going to say negative. Well, it is negative. I'm going to write negative. 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 And then if a data value is above the mean, above the mean, then z-score is positive, so data value is above the mean if it's greater than the mean. Positive, below, above. Okay, now we're going to write down formulas for finding population z-score and sample z-score. Well, the good news is those formulas are exactly the same except they use different notations. But structure of the formula of those formulas is exactly the same. So to find z-score, we have to start with the actual data value for which we're trying to find the z-score. So we're going to denote by x. So x is the data value. Then we're going to subtract the mean. Well, we, we deal with population, so mean is denoted by Greek letter mu. So that's population mean. So that difference tells us how far um, that data value is from the mean, but if we want to calculated in terms of standard deviations, and that's how z-score is defined. We have now to divide by standard deviation. So sigma stands for population standard deviation. Standard deviation. And that's, that's the formula for calculating z-score. Now, sample z-score is calculated the same way, it's just we're going to use different notation for mean and standard deviation. So it's going to be x minus what is the notation for sample, standard uh, sample, uh, sample mean. It's x bar. And then what is notation for sample standard deviation? That's s. So sample mean sample standard deviation. Since z-score describes the rel relative position of a certain data value within the entire set, it actually allows us to compare, you know, we can, we can say like apples and oranges in a sense. So let's read this example, it's going to make kind of like more sense where z-score should be used. So. Roberta finishes a triathlon in 63.2 minutes. Among all men in the race, the mean finishing time was 69.4 minutes, so that's the average finishing time, right? Um, what can we say about Roberta? Well, actually, 
he's faster than average, right? So he's, he's doing good. Um, he's faster than average with a standard deviation of 8.9 minutes. Okay. Sandra finishes the same triathlon in 79.3 minutes. Okay, so well, she's slower than Roberta, obviously, right? But among all women in the race, the mean finishing time was 84.7 minutes, right? So they had results by gender. And that means that she's actually also better than average, right? She finished faster than the average runner um, in that race. So even though she's slower than Roberto, within her gender, we can see that she's faster than average. Um, with a standard deviation of 7.4 minutes. And here's the question. Who did better in relation to their gender? Zandra or Roberto? As you can see, we have different information about race results for different genders, right? So it would not be fair to compare Zandra's finishing time with Roberta's finishing time. So obviously she's slower, but the question is being asked who's, who did better in relation to their gender. And that's where Z-score will be helpful. We're going to find Z-score for Roberta's result and Zandra's result. And those z-scores will give us the relative position of their results within the entire data set for each gender. And that's how we can, can compare um, their results. So let's first organize the given information because it's, it's a lot of information here. So let's say, so Roberto. Now his his time is 63.2 minutes, right? And uh, Sandra, I'll use different color here, Sandra. Her time is 79.3 minutes. Okay, so now let's find Z-score for each result. Now for Roberto, if we want to find z-score for his result, we have to use information for results among all men, right? According to the formula, we have to start with a data value. Well, that's Roberto's result, 63.2. Then we need to subtract mean. So the mean here is... 69.4 minutes, right? Minutes minus 69.4 divided by standard deviation. Standard deviation is 8.9 minutes. Now, if we put this in the calculator, we're going to find that the C-score is negative 0.7 if we round it to two decimal places, which is a common thing to do. Um, couple notes. So that's the mean. That's standard deviation. Okay, so that's Roberta's z-score. By the way, notice how it's negative. Well, it's negative because this data value, 63.2 minutes, is below the mean, right? And that's consistent with what we wrote at the top. Now let's find Zandra's z-score or a z-score that corresponds to Zandra's finishing result. We start with the data value, 79.3, subtract mean, but now this time we have to find the mean or look at the mean for finishing time among women, 84.7, 84.7, that's the mean, and divided by 7.4, which is the standard deviation. Their deviation. Okay, so if we put that into the calculator, don't forget that you have to be careful how to you input this expression. If you input it as one whole expression, then you will have to enclose the numerator in the parentheses. Or you can first calculate the numerator, press enter, find the result for the numerator, and then divide by 7.4. So that's negative 0.73 which is also negative, negative z-score, but that's also consistent because Zandra's result is below the mean, right? It's less than mean, it's to the left of the mean. 
But here's the question. Who did better in relation to their gender? Now as we look at these scores. Well, to help us to figure this out, let's make a number line that represents these scores. So here's the number line representing these scores. Now, no matter which gender we pick, uh, if we look at all that in terms of z-scores, we know that at z-score 0, we're going to have mean or average result for either gender, right? z-score 0 corresponds to the mean, which is average result. That's how I can think about it. Average result. And now let's place Zandra's and Roberto's z-scores on this number line. They're both negative, so we have to be careful to put them in the right spots, but which one is going to be closer to zero? Well, negative 0 0.70, that's the one that's closer to zero. So let's, let's say we put it here, negative 0 0.70, and that's Roberto's result. And then Zandra's result will be further to the left. So I'll put it here. I'm, it's not up to scale. I just need to, you know, kind of see their relative positions. Negative 0.73, that's Zandra. Now let's analyze what we can see here. Um, we can see that both of them are below the mean, right? Which means that they did better than average runner in that race. But who is further away below? Well, Zandra is further away below, right? What does this mean in the context of this problem? So we can't just generalize that. It, it has to be within the context of each given problem. The meaning of the result of this kind of result is going to be different. But in, in the context of this problem, when we deal with a race, well, you better runner if you below, if you're um, result, if your you know, finishing time is further away below the mean as possible, right? If So that means that the z-score that's um, further away below the mean shows the better result. And that has to be for Zandra, right? Let's make notes for that. So we'll say Zandra's z-score, well, it's technically not her z-score, it's z-score corresponding her finishing time result. Um, I'll, well, I'll say Zandra's, I think it makes sense, right, what I mean here. So Zandra's, or I'll say Zandra's finishing time times z-score, then it's going to sound correct. Zandra's finishing time z-score is further away below the mean. And that means that she did better in relation to her gender. That means that Zandra did better in relation to her gender. So that's how you do this example.